Hey guys, so for those of you who don't know, I'm going to be making a new video every Monday, Thursday, and Sunday. So since today is Sunday, I have a new video for you guys, and I'll be doing the bookshelf scavenger hunt tag, which was created by the Library of Sarah. So I'll leave her link in the down bar, and she created this really cool tag where she created a list of books that you need to find within your bookshelf based on a certain type of criteria. So there's different things you need to find, so hopefully I can find all of them or most of them. Without further ado, I'm going to get started and begin begin scavenging my bookshelf for these different types of books. The first thing I need to find in my bookshelf is a book with a letter Z in either the title or the author's name. I have Zombies vs. Unicorns by a bunch of different authors. Basically there's authors on Team Zombie and Team Unicorn, so there's a Z in the zombies, so ding ding, I got the first one. Alright, so the second thing on my list that I need to find is a classic, and the closest thing I have to this, and a classic I do have, is Macbeth by Shakespeare, and this is the No Fear Shakespeare version, which I use for school because it has the English translation right beside it. So yes, this is the classic I have on my bookshelf. The third thing I need to find on my bookshelf is a book with a key on it, and the first thing that came to my mind is in the bookshelf behind me, so I'm just going to reach behind and grab it. The book I'm talking about is Incarceron by Katherine Fisher, and as you can see, there's an awesome key on the front. The key is actually a huge part of the story and a huge part of the plot. It's an awesome cover, and that gives me number three checked off my list. The fourth thing on my list that I need to find is something on my bookshelf that's not a book. So I have a lot of knickknacks and stuff over there, so I'm going to go grab one and show you guys. This is one thing on my bookshelf that's not a book. It's a little dog with glasses on it. That's one of the things I have, so that checks off number four on my list. The fifth thing that I need to find on my list is the oldest book in my bookshelf, and I'm going to go by the publication date. And It's not very old, but it'll do, so I'm going to go get it for you guys. So the oldest book that I consider to be in my bookshelf is the collection of books in the Narnia series by C.S. Lewis, and this is the bind-up of all the books in the series. It does say that The Magician's Nephew was originally uh, published in 1955, and then the last one was published in 1984. So yeah, that's number five on my list that I found in my bookshelf. The next thing that I need to find on my list makes me laugh so much because it has to be a book with a girl on the cover and about 90% of my books have either some form of a girl in a dress or a girl posing on the cover. I'll just choose The Immortal Rules by Julie Kegua, girl on the front. It's one of my favorite covers ever and I'm so upset because the sequel doesn't look like this. It has a different jacket design so that's pretty upsetting. Girl's face on it so Cha-ching! Got the next one already. The next one is to find a book with an animal in it, so in the story. I didn't want to just get a book with like a dog or a pet cat in it, so I ended up finding Ice by Sarah Beth Durst in my bookshelf because there's a polar bear in this novel. It's actually a polar bear king, and it's like a fairy tale mixed in with all these different fantasy elements. It was super good, and the polar bear is kind of creepy in this book, but also really cool. The next book that I need to find has to have a male protagonist, and I have a lot of those, so it won't be that hard to find one behind me. Here we go! I have The Maze Runner by James Dashner, who has a main character and male protagonist whose name is Thomas. It's an awesome novel that just had me on the edge of my seat for the entire time, action-packed, and I loved it, and Thomas is a great male protagonist. So this next one I think I'm going to fail at because I don't think I have it. Um, maybe I do, I'd have to look, but I need to find a book with only words on the cover, so no images or no photos or photographs or no girls on the cover, so that's going to be hard, but I will start looking. I don't think there's any here that I have. So I did end up finding one. I found the Vampire Academy The Ultimate Guide. There's no images on it. There's only words and letters because that's a V and an A, so it's like just letters. No pictures. Yay! Cha-ching! <laughs> The next book I need to find is one with illustrations in it, and I do have a lot of those. Well, not a lot, but I have a few, and I will find one for you guys to show you. I have one in mind that's one of my favorites ever. I got myself Lips Touched by Lanny Taylor, and these have beautiful drawn images inside that go along with the story. Just pretty stuff like that. Look how gorgeous that is. They're amazing. I absolutely love the pictures in this. They're so fantasy inspired and kind of mythical and just really beautiful. So I got myself an illustrated book. It's awesome. I totally recommend it. So the next book I need to find is one with gold lettering on the cover and I have one in mind that's right behind me. 
and it is the Golden Lily by Rochelle Mead and the letters as you can see are gold they're kind of dark and they're not shimmery but they are gold hence the title the Golden Lily so it's kind of like a bronzy gold this is the second book in the Bloodline series that is the continuation of Vampire Academy and I totally recommend the series if you've read Vampire Academy it is amazing the next book I need to find is either a true or fictional diary and I had to go digging for this book because I knew I had it and I read them when I was younger, like grade 5 or grade 4. I found The Death of My Country, it's a Dear Canada novel and basically they are novels for um, from girls at certain points in history and I believe this one was in the 1700s. Yeah, so around 1759 it started. I got a diary so... Here it is. So the next book I need to find has to be written by an author with a common name such as Smith and I do have a book written by an author named Alexander Gordon Smith so I'm going to find that book for you guys. I have Lockdown which is written by Alexander Gordon Smith and this is the first book in a series following a boy who is sent to an underground prison for something he did not do. It's kind of spooky and scary but it's awesome at the same time. Totally love this series. So the next book I need to find has to have a close-up of something on it and I can't can't really think of one offhand, but I'm gonna look around and see what I can find. I found Rot in Ruin by Jonathan Mayberry, which is a book that's been on my shelf for so long, but it has a really close-up view of a boy's face, and his eye is very large and kind of creepy, so the close-up view of it is really cool, really engaging, and that's one of the reasons why I got it, aside from the awesome, awesome summary and plot details. The next thing I need to look for is a book on my bookshelf with the earliest time period that I own, and I'm not 100% sure which is the earliest, but I do have a book in mind that takes place a really really long time ago. I have The Revolution by Jennifer Donnelly and there's one character within this book who lives in um, a long long time ago like two centuries ago and the dates on the inside say like 1795 but yeah so around 1795 is probably the earliest that I have in terms of the setting in a book. So the next thing I need to find is a hardcover book with no jacket on it and I don't have a book that was made for that purpose so a hardcover with the design actually on the hardcover and it wasn't made with a jacket but I do have a book that I lost the jacket with and it originally had one but I don't have it on it and that is In Ingo by Helen Dunmore and this is a mermaid series that I loved and I read when I was younger so I don't know if that counts it was made with one but I don't have it so this one is one on my bookshelf with no jacket Jacket, so I guess it kind of does count. The next book I need to find is a book with a teal and turquoise coloring on the cover and I have a few with those so I'm gonna go get one now. So I have Delirium by Lauren Oliver and as you can see by the cover it's kind of a greeny blue turquoise color so yeah I do have it. I wasn't a huge fan of this book, side note, um, but it was okay. Eh, but the cover is really nice and I really like the color so I found a teal and turquoise book. The second last book I need to find is a book with stars on the cover and I don't even know if I have this but I'm going to start looking now. I think I have a few in mind, it's just a matter of finding them. I don't know why I didn't think of this offhand but A Million Suns by Beth Revis has a buttload of stars on the cover. There's one right here, um, there's little ones all over the place so yes there's a lot of stars on here and I'm sure a lot of people are choosing these ones but yeah it's the most obvious. A lot of stars on here, the realistic stars so it really works for this one. The very last book I need to find is a non-YA book and I actually have one of those right offhand that I showed you guys recently so I'm just going to go get it. I have The Sisters Brothers by Patrick DeWitt and this is not a YA book, it's adult fiction. I got it for an English class as you guys know from my past few videos. It's about two cowboys and who are also assassins, definitely not YA and it's on my bookshelf so I think that means I completed them all. Alright guys, so that's it for my tag video. It looks like that I was able to find one book for every single criteria so Woo! Awesome! That was really fun. If you guys want to do this video, leave a response down below. I'd love to see what books you can find in your bookshelf. So thank you to the Library of Sarah for creating this awesome tag. It was really fun to do. If you guys seem like you want to do it, definitely give it a go. It's so much fun and I like searching through my bookshelf. Even though sometimes it was a bit tricky, it was definitely worth it. So thank you so much for watching. I'll have a new video up tomorrow since it's Monday. So I will see you then in my new video. Bye!